The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of King Herod, behold, Magi from the east arrived in Jerusalem, saying, Where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star at its rising, and have come to do him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was greatly troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. Assembling all the chief priests and the scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it has been written through the prophet, And you, Bethlehem, land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, since from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and ascertained from them the time of the star's appearance. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the child. When you have found him, bring me word that I too may go and do him homage. After their audience with the king, they set out, and behold, the star that they had seen at its rising preceded them, until it came and stopped over the place where the child was. They were overjoyed at seeing the star, and on entering the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother. They prostrated themselves and did him, did him homage, Then they opened their treasures and offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed for their country by another way. The Gospel of the Lord. What do you think the manger smelled like when Jesus was born? I'm not kidding. What was the light like? Was it cold? Sometimes it does snow in Bethlehem. What color were the swaddling clothes? Did the three kings have garments made of silk? Were their expressions at first disappointed in their surroundings? And did they get to hold the baby Jesus? If you, students and faculty and friends and those online, don't have answers to these questions, then you ought to work on it. Ask each other after Mass. Discuss them on breaks, because there's enough time before second semester begins. Talk to your families about them over dinner. It's a totally appropriate way to pray in our Catholic Church. A little imagination, putting ourselves right into the scene. And you might think that after a COVID Christmas, perhaps I've lost it, but it's not true. This is the whole reason that we have nativity scenes, like the marvelous one in the Lady Chapel of the Basilica, and the one by our grotto, and those from around this world that adorn the Notre Dame campus this time of year. 800 years ago, a wild-eyed man you may have heard of named St. Francis was spending Christmas in a little Umbrian town. And he was inspired to get into Christmas a little bit more. So, at least according to, pope, or according to St. Bonaventure, he got permission from the Pope and built a little manger scene. He didn't have any money, but he managed to bring in some hay. Then he worked on the animals. He got an ox and a donkey, presumably on loan since he didn't have any money. Now I've found that Catholics from six-year-olds to Pope Benedict's writings understand that there are no mentions of oxen or donkeys in the New Testament birth stories of our Lord, only in the Old Testament prophets. So what was St. Francis doing? He was trying to recreate the environment of the story, 
using his imagination to help him to enter into it. And when he was done, he called together all of the brothers, and they sang Christmas hymns and prayed to Jesus around that first manger scene. Fervid hagiography this may be, but it's trying to communicate a simple, sincere, imaginative prayer. St. Francis started to cry. He was so overcome with joy, and bystanders said that in that first nativity, the infant Lord actually appeared, and St. Francis held the Christ child in his arms. Thinking about how it was when Jesus was born is not just playing games. It's a real point of access to our Lord. We encounter the rest of the world through sights and sounds, touches, smells, and tastes. We can and should encounter Jesus Christ in a similar way. This is the blessed secret that the three magi bring to us today. Each gift they brought was a different one of the major senses, sight and smell and touch. The first king brought gold. Gold was precious because it was rare and looked beautiful to the eyes. Now we can imagine the infant Lord surrounded by some glimmering, shining gold. It meant you will be a king. Maybe he smiled and reached for it like infants do. The second king brought frankincense, which came from the milky sap of the Boswellia tree. Ancients burned this sap to signify their prayers rising to heaven. It was thought to warm people. Let's add some incense then to our manger scene. The third gift was myrrh. It was also a resin produced from a tree, but a rough and scraggly tree, and it had properties healing for the touch. Ancient peoples used it as an ointment to treat wounds, bruising and bleeding as it was antiseptic in nature. They even used it in embalming. Maybe Mary rubbed some of it on, the, on baby Jesus after his first bath, or later when our Lord started to walk and fell, skinned his knee and was in need of healing. We have a tendency to look at the gifts of these three kings and pass them off as the cool sort of gifts for first century kings. But then we would be missing the point. These gifts added a sight, a smell, and a touch to the manger scene. They remind us that the kings themselves saw the infant Jesus lying in the manger, smelled the space and the air, talked with Mary and Joseph, and maybe even touched our Lord, picking him up and holding the blessed baby in their arms. These are the experiences that changed them in order that they might go back another way. Friends, we don't have nativity scenes just for ambiance at Christmas time. We have them because they are the windows through which each one of us is to have an interaction with our infant Lord. That's the secret. And when we start physically observing the manger scene, talking to the kings and the shepherds, and taking in all of the details, we ultimately start noticing things about that little babe lying in the manger. St. Francis did it, and Jesus appeared in his arms. I urge you to take some time, this epiphany day or night, either here in our Basilica of the Sacred Heart or at your nativity at home, to spend some time alone or with your loved ones at that scene. Look at all of the people. Talk about the details in the, that the craftsmen brought forth in those figures. Use your imagination. Experience the wise men's gifts. Breathe in what it smells like. Go, pet the ox. And perhaps more fully than before, you'll discover that Jesus is there, waiting for you and for me to hold him, to take him up into our arms and into our lives. Then, like the wise men, we too 
we'll be able to saddle up our camels and ride away from this Christmas into 2021, changed for the better.